This is Last Dance Central on Inside Varsity Sports. Hi, everyone. I'm Lou Brogno, standing in front of Yogi Berra Stadium on the campus of Montclair State University, where this Tuesday, the round of 32 will continue in the Last Dance World Series here in the Garden State. Some big-time baseball coming up this week, of course, with 32 teams whittled down from 222 teams that started this outstanding baseball tournament. Last week, all 222 teams played three games in pool play, four teams in each regional, and the teams who had the best records in those three games, of course, advanced to the round of 32. 16 in the north, 16 in the south. Now, most teams advanced with 3-0 records, but that wasn't always the case. And we'll explain as we go along as some teams were able to advance due to some technicalities, if you will. Now, here's just a few big stories in pool play after week number one. Up north, Don Bosco, the tournament's number one seed, played up to that advanced billing. They got up to a great start, off to a 3-0 start, knocking off feisty Waldwick, scoring seven runs in the first two innings. They ran their record to 3-0. The regional featured a touching emotional ceremony as well prior to the opening game, honoring former Ironman and Cliffside Park coach Ben Luterer, who tragically passed away from COVID-19 complications at the age of 30. It was an emotional tribute to a beloved member of the Don Bosco community. Other results of note in the North include perennial power Del Barton knocking off Persippany Hills 16 to nothing. Seven run second, eight run third. Kyle Vinci, the big hitting hero here with a grand slam and five RBIs in the game. Montclair stunned Seton Hall prep six to five, scoring the walk off winning run on a bunt single, a wild pitch and a throwing error. At Stunseat Hall Prep, many expected them to advance to at least to the round of 32. In central New Jersey, St. Joe's Metuchen and Blank Edison 4-0. Duke bound Adam Boucher, John Zanowski, and Colin Linder combined on a no-hitter. Bridgewater Raritan advanced despite going 2-1. Immaculata and Somerville also finished 2-1 in that regional. But due to the run differential tiebreaker, Bridgewater Raritan advances, having allowed just two runs in 21 innings compared to Immaculata's 4-21 and Somerville's 5-22. Down south, Middlesex ran its record to 3-0, defeating South Brunswick 3-0. Matt Holmes hurled a four-hitter, and he struck out seven along the way. And the Dirty Boys squad, also known as Hamilton West, continued its strong showing, knocking off Trenton Catholic 7-2. Nate Rodriguez, he tossed a one-hitter, and he whiffed seven in the game as well. Also down south, inside varsity's Jake Ostrove has been roaming around the region, covering games all three days in the southern part of the state. On Thursday, he was in Lakewood, and he had a good chance to take a look at the south's number one seed, Jackson Memorial, as they defeated Manalapan. Thanks, Lou. I'm here at the home of the Lakewood Blue Claws here at First Energy Park, and 32 teams remain out of the 222 team field. Pool play is officially closed. I went to eight or nine sites across the three days, and let me just say, every game had the same theme. High level, high intensity baseball with playoff feel because there's just a little something more on the line. You can always say there's always next year, but in this case, there is no next year. It's one state champion for the entire state of New Jersey. Some things that have stood out to me, St. Joe's has some of the best pitching that I've seen across the state. Donovan Zach struck out the first 11 batters he faced yesterday, and today they threw a combined no-hitter to steal the regional championship. And just a few moments ago, when Jackson Memorial knocked off Manalapan Braves, Jackson Memorial's got some of the best bats that I have seen in all the games that I've been to. I would love to see a matchup down the line between Jackson Memorial and St. Joe's. To put a pin on all of the pool play and all the underdogs and all the games that have been played over the last few days, the Matawan coach said it best to me on Tuesday night after they knocked off division rival and top-seeded Ocean Township in Ocean as well on their home field. The win is just gravy. Success is just a byproduct. Everyone is just happy to be out playing with the guys, playing ball, acting like kids again. It's good to have a return to normalcy. That'll just about do it for me. I'm Jake Ostrov. Back to you, Lou. 
So Jackson Memorial, of course, advances to the round of 32. And another team that advances is Deptford. Interesting story here. They knocked out Gloucester Catholic. That's right, Gloucester Catholic, one of the favorites of this tournament, as Deptford won. Shane Adamski had a two-run double and three RBIs. Brett Altamore struck out seven over six innings of work. Now, obviously, Deptford knocked Gloucester Catholic out of the tournament, right? Not quite. Gloucester Catholic thought they were done, but they were able to advance in the tournament and the round of 32. After going 3-0 in the Brooklawn Regional, Deptford was ruled to have violated a pitching rule in its victory over Gloucester Catholic, and tournament organizers allowed the Spartans to remain in the event instead of removing them from the competition. Gloucester Catholic, which lost to Deptford and finished 2-1 in pool play, was able to advance because of the violation. And that's not the end of the story as far as reorganization goes for the round of 32. Early Sunday morning, it was revealed that there was some possible COVID-19 exposure. Tournament organizers were, had to drop both Point Pleasant Borough and Middletown South, despite the fact that both teams were undefeated. They revealed that some players may have had exposure to persons with confirmed coronavirus cases. Now, the, T the CDC guidelines say that even with a rapid negative test result, the players would be ineligible due to the five-day incubation period. So those players were eliminated from the tournament due to, to, due to health reasons and health precautions. Now, due to the change, there are some schedule adjustments, if you will, and those schedule adjustments really pertain to First Energy Park in Lakewood, the home of the Blue Claws, on Tuesday. The first game begins at 8.30 in the morning. Get your coffee ready as Middletown North takes on Gloucester Catholic Brooklawn. At 11.30, Sussex Red will take on Washington Township. Kingsway goes up against Howell at 3 o'clock. And at 6.30, St. Joe's Metuchen will take on that Deptford squad that originally knocked off Gloucester Catholic. Other regionals that get underway on Tuesday at TD Bank Ballpark, the home of the Somerset Patriots in Bridgewater. Montclair, that team that knocked off Seton Hall Prep, takes on Cranford. That's an early game as well, 10 a.m. And Dell Barton, who's been scoring runs uh, by the tons, will take on Woodridge. That game is at 1 p.m. At Armand Hammer Park in Trenton, Jackson Memorial, the number one seed in the South, takes on that undefeated Middlesex squad. That should be a good one at 3.30. And then Hamilton West goes up against Notre Dame at 7 p.m. One note about that game, that game is sold out already at Arm and Hammer Park in Trenton. So uh, if you don't have your tickets, uh, you will not be able to get in. Of course, the tournament now, as we move on, is limiting fans to 500 per game. So once uh, 500 people have their tickets to go to the game, that's it. So that game is sold out on Tuesday night. And of course, right here at Yogi Berra Stadium, a tremendous doubleheader as Bergen Catholic takes on Mount Olive at 10 a.m. and Governor Livingston goes up against Don Bosco at 1 p.m. And of course, uh, that could be a prelude to what could be a big matchup between Don Bosco and Bergen Catholic. Last time those two teams met last year was in the non-public A semifinals, a game that was won by Bosco by the score of 2-1. to one. Still, both teams will have to get through their first round games on Tuesday to make a rematch happen between Bergen and Bosco. So a great week of baseball coming up in the Last Dance World Series. The round of 32 commences on Tuesday. And of course, uh, then we'll head to the Sweet 16 statewide. And next week, it gets real serious. The Elite Eight Final Four and the championship game for the New Jersey State Crown on Friday night, July 31st at Arm and Hammer Park. Well, that'll do it here from Yogi Berra Stadium. I'm Lou Brogno. Thanks for joining us here on Last Dance Central here on Inside Varsity Sports. We'll see you next week as we wrap up another great week of baseball.